Welcome to the next uh, video lecture in Introduction to Machine Learning. So now, after we've uh, talked about bagging, we can finally actually start talking about random forests. Okay, so random forests are essentially bagging for classification. Classification and regression trees were invented or introduced by Bryman, 2001. So the tree-based learners are trained on bootstrap samples of the data. That's the bagging part. Um, usually we use tree-based learners that are basically fully run. So no aggressive early stopping and no pruning in order to get a, an ensemble with high variability. Yeah, we looked at uh, this analysis of bagging and we saw that bagging really has the most benefit if we have base learners that are as variable as possible. So by using fairly complicated trees as base learners without early stopping or pruning, we can increase the variance and that's good for bagging. Um, and the second thing we saw was when does bagging help? Well, bagging helps if the base learner's predictions are not too strongly correlated. So we want to build decorrelated trees that are more independent um, in what they predict. Um, and the question is, how do we do that? Yeah. Um, so we know that decorrelating the trees improves the accuracy of the ensemble, the expected loss of the ensemble. So the simplest way to do this, um, to increase the independence between different trees, is to not just provide them with different subsamples of the data, that's the bootstrapping approach, but also force them to use different subsets of the features. And in random forests, the way this is done is that in each node, in each tree of the ensemble, we only consider randomly drawn subsets of our features. Specifically, um, the name of that parameter is typically mtry. We only we, we randomly draw M try features, much, much fewer than the features that we have available and only consider them for splitting. There's a couple of rules of thumb, so you can choose M try um, for classification. They usually say it's about the square root um, of the total number of predictors for regression. They say, yeah, use a third. Okay. So, but these are rules of thumb, not necessarily the best uh, values you can pick for your specific application, but that's the idea. Yeah, we decorrelate the individual members of our ensembles by forcing them to only ever use a subset of the available features for every split. And in every split, we randomly draw another subset of these features. Okay. Um, now, how do predictions of um, such a random forest look like? Okay, this would be an example for one fairly complicated tree um, fitted to the iris data set. Yeah, I mean, you can see this is already a fairly complicated step function. Uh, probably that tree has um, <clears throat> quite a lot of nodes. Now, that's a single tree. Now let's see what happens if we average the predictions of 10 trees, okay? So we still have um, this step function like structure because well every member of the random forest that we average over is still a tree yeah so we get a bunch of averages of step functions that's still going to be a step function but it's going to be a more complicated step function yeah? and as we increase the number of trees by averaging over so many different step functions we actually start to see something that looks almost smooth yeah, I mean, you can still see that uh, this is kind of rectangular and has these jumps, but it does become a lot more smooth. With 500 trees, we get uh, these uh, decision regions here for a random forest for the iris data set. All right. Um, another nice 
feature of random forests uh, with this bagging is that because for the training of each of these trees we're using a bootstrap sample of the original data, this subsample training data for that specific ensemble member basically comes with its own test set that we can use to get um, a good estimate, an unbiased estimate of the generalization performance of that ensemble member. And if we do that for all of the ensemble members and again average it together by just looking at, okay, how does that ensemble member, that tree, perform on the out of bootstrap OOB data, out of bag, <clears throat> Of bag samples that that weren't used to train it, yeah. So we can get a better better estimate of um, what the misclassification error or whatever loss function we're using would be. Yeah. So this is this is nice. We can basically do cross validation already during the training and get a good estimate of the likely generalization performance. Um, okay. How does this work? Um, let's take a closer look at that diagram up here. So we are introducing some new notation, the out of bag risk for um, <clears throat> our ensemble yeah, is um, for the mth base liner is just the average loss of the base liner M when we try to predict subjects or observations that are in the out of bag sample that are not in the bootstrap training data for that M's ensemble member. Yeah, so if you think about a random forest that's a bunch of different trees, every tree is based on a different bootstrap sample of the data. So the the training data that was actually part of the bootstrap sample that's indicated in blue here. So this first tree was in, trained on that data set, second tree was trained on that data set, third tree was trained on this data set, all the way up to the nth tree that was trained on this data set. Yeah. Um, but we can directly compute something like a test error or a holdout um, error by using the out of bag data, which is here in gray, to evaluate the predictive performance of each of these trees. Yeah? So for every tree, we get an estimated predictive performance on the observations that weren't used to train that specific tree. And then we take all them together and average them. And that gives us an estimate of our um, likely performance. Okay. Um, now, how big are these uh, bootstrap samples, or rather these out of bootstrap samples? If you think about what's the probability of any given observation of not being drawn in the bootstrap, well, that's one minus one antel, one, one over n, yeah, because that's the probability of not drawing that one observation. It's one minus one n. Um, and that is done actually n times because we're doing n samples without repla with replacement, right? So, and this looks like um, the arithmetic, the, this in the limit for large n, this goes to one over e, yeah, because of the uh, series expansion of uh, the of the of the e number. Okay, well, either you know that or you don't. Doesn't matter. It is like that. So um, expected size of the out of bootstrap sample is about 0.37 of the original data. So that means this is kind of similar to threefold cross validation, where we have uh, two thirds of the data for training and one third of the data for evaluation. Yeah. Um, so that's a nice feature of uh, these cards. Um, thank you for listening. Sorry, for this uh, nice feature of these random forests, I should have said. Thank you for listening um, and see you soon.